The Triumph and Tragedy of Penicillin by Isabella Zuccaroli Today, when we hear of diseases such as strep throat, scarlet fever, and tonsillitis, we don't think of them as necessarily deadly diseases. However, before penicillin and the age of antibiotics, a simple scratch, along with any of the previously mentioned diseases, could be fatal to practically anyone, no matter age or fitness level. Penicillin, which is commonly called a miracle drug, managed to triumph over the tragedy of multiple diseases by providing medical relief during World War II and by ushering in the age of antibiotics. Prior to penicillin, any bacterial infection was almost unable to be treated at the time. A simple scratch could kill a person through septicemia or introduce them to any number of debilitating diseases. Additionally, surgery was a great risk because there was no way of preventing an inevitable infection on the open wound or limit the chances of pneumonia for the patient. In the 1800s, tuberculosis was responsible for about 25% of all deaths. Increased sanitation is responsible for the decline from about the 1860s, but there was no way of stopping the disease until antibiotics came along. Additionally, many sexually transmitted diseases, such as gonorrhea and syphilis, were incurable and left horrible effects. Mortality rates were up to about 20% from syphilis alone. For hundreds of years, the tragedy of bacterial diseases that were unable to be cured plagued the world and were a sure sign of death for many. The discovery of the miracle drug penicillin is commonly described as serendipitous. In 1928, a Scottish researcher named Sir Alexander Fleming was experimenting with the influenza virus at St. Mary's Hospital in London when he returned after a two-week vacation to find a strange growth on an accidentally cross-contaminated Staphylococcus petri dish. Intrigued, Fleming examined the white fluffy mass and noted that it prevented the growth of the Staphylococci. The colonies closer to the penicillin were all undergoing lysis, as the penicillin grew larger. From here, Fleming conducted a series of various experiments and determined that penicillin effectively inhibited the growth of strains of Staphylococcus, strep throat, pneumonia, gonorrhea, and even diphtheria. He published his findings in the 1929 British Journal of Experimental Pathology. This breakthrough discovery was an exciting new advance in science. At the current time, however, scientists weren't sure how to proceed with the newfound information because they did not know how to produce large amounts of the culture. Ten years later, however, a group led by Howard Florey and Ernest Chain at Oxford University worked to purify penicillin. The challenge of how to mass produce this new culture was still a large one, but the invention of a customized fermentation vessel began to help. In 1940, Flory proved that penicillin protected mice from strains of strep. These successful results were exciting confirmations that penicillin would be the miracle the world was hoping for. The professor rang me up on that Sunday morning. He expressed his feelings about the result of this experiment by saying it looks like a miracle. And as he was usually a person who was given to understatement, uh, this was very surprising. The expression he used meant that he was really excited about it. After more positive tests on animals, the first human recipient of penicillin was 43-year-old policeman Albert Alexander. He had been in his garden pruning roses when he scratched the side of his mouth with a thorn. This scratch became infected and turned into a large abscess that affected his hearing, his sight, and his vision. He was given penicillin and made an incredible recovery in just a few days. Many tests like this occurred and came out to be positive as well. With a war brewing, penicillin had come at the perfect time. Mass production was being pushed to have the miracle drug by the start of the war. Penicillin was such a huge discovery because it was the first way found to kill bacteria. This job was so hard because of the basic anatomy of a bacteria cell. Bacteria have a protective covering called a cell wall that provides it with structure and extra protection. 
Human cells do not have cell walls. Within cell walls, there is a substance known as peptidoglycan. It surrounds the cell wall again in order to make it even more durable and strong. These peptidoglycans also make it impossible for external fluids to enter the bacteria and change the osmotic pressure. The wonder about penicillin is that it is able to damage the peptidoglycan and weaken the cell wall. These are two separate colonies of E. coli. On the left, penicillin has been added to the agar, while the right is a control specimen. The penicillin in the left manages to kill the bacteria when it would be able to live in normal conditions. The wonder about penicillin is that it is able to damage the peptidoglycan and weaken the cell wall. This causes changes within the protective cell wall, which leads to the lysis of the cell by causing it to burst open and die. The bacteria has no way to combat these damages. The reason that this drug penicillin is so effective is that human cells do not have cell walls containing peptidoglycans, meaning that it is impossible for penicillin to harm human cells. After positive results with Albert Alexander and others, there was a push for mass production of penicillin. Knowing that too much of the chemical industry in England was busy gearing up for war efforts, Flory decided to go to the United States with the help from the Rockefeller Foundation in order to introduce penicillin to the American pharmaceutical industry. A man named Andrew Moyer did extensive research on how to increase the yield of penicillin and soon found a method that increased the yield about 10 times. At first, large pharmaceutical companies were apprehensive of the concept of penicillin, but after seeing results and some more convincing from others, four companies by the name of Merck & Co., E.R. Squibb & Sons, Charles Pfeiffer & Co., and Letterly Laboratories agreed to help mass produce the drug. By 1942, 10 cases were successfully treated with penicillin provided by Merck & Co. Incorporated. Unfortunately, penicillin doses were used up very quickly and it soon became clear to scientists that mass production was going to have to be a combined effort. In preparation for D-Day, 21 U.S. companies came together to produce 2.3 million doses of penicillin for soldiers in combat. Penicillin was an extremely important factor during World War II. With the unsanitary conditions during the war, the risk of diseases such as septicemia was great. Penicillin saved the lives of many and ensured a recovery from something that they thought to be deadly. In addition, surgeries on wounded soldiers could be performed more efficiently and at lower risk. Not only relating to septicemia, penicillin managed to decrease the mortality rates of diseases such as syphilis, tuberculosis, and even scarlet fever. Despite the fact that increasing sanitation levels over the past 50 years contributed to a large decrease in the death rates, Penicillin and the age of antibiotics were able to stop the diseases, as mentioned before, from being quite as taxing on society. In addition, for their incredible work, Fleming, Flory, and Chain were awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for their wonder drug, penicillin. By the 1970s, penicillin had been a pioneer drug that had ushered in the age of antibiotics that managed to triumph over many deadly diseases and make them completely treatable. Prior to penicillin, the world was struck with the tragedy of bacterial diseases such as staph, diphtheria, scarlet fever, syphilis, and even septicemia. However, due to Sir Alexander Fleming's 1928 discovery and the following years of research, the so-called miracle drug was perfected and triumphed over the pr prior centuries of tragedy. It saved millions of soldiers during World War II and managed to bring forth the age of antibiotics, making then-deadly diseases treatable. Until this day in 2019, penicillin and related strains of it are used as an effective means of treating illness.